Okay, dear student, let's see what is there in this question. A satellite moves around the Earth in a circular orbit. Draw an arrow on the diagram to represent the direction of the acceleration of the satellite. So clearly, uh, the only acceleration which is happening on the satellite is downwards here towards the surface of the Earth, which is centripetal acceleration. There is no acceleration in this direction or in this direction. Otherwise, the velocity of the satellite would be increasing and the radius will be changing. And so that is why we know that the satellite is moving at a constant speed and that is why only acceleration which is happening is centripetal <clears throat> okay moving next now the following data are given the mass of the earth the radius of the earth is given the orbital time period of the satellite is also given kepler's third law of the motion says t square is directly point to r cube k is a constant show that the k value is this okay dear student listen to this this question is very important highly expected in the examinations for SL as well as for HL, this topic must be coming. This question is highly expected. Time and again, I will ask this question in a repeated manner. Okay, and this question is coming in paper two, and that is why you have to show the the working. You have to show how you derive it, and only then you can prove that yes, k value is four pi squared divided by gm. So you need to remember this derivation that I'm giving now. So if you do not remember it, just watch it now and remember it. Otherwise good to go so we will start this thing this topic with the orbital velocity because this formula i think is given in the data booklet so the orbital velocity is known to be root of gm by r the speed at which the rock the satellite is moving in the circular motion around the earth and so the time period should be given by the circumference 2 pi r divided by the speed at which it is going to cover it so this will be 2 pi r divided by square root of gm by r now i'm going to square it on the both sides so this becomes t square and 2 pi will become 4 pi square this r will become r square the denominator will become gm by r now this r which is in the denominator of the denominator so when you are dividing fraction by fraction what you do you multiply by the reciprocal so it can also be written as 4 pi square into r square divided by gm multiplied by r. So this comes out to be 4 pi square r cube divided by gm. And we will say that on comparing it with t square is equal to k r cube, we can fairly come to this conclusion that k is equal to 4 pi square divided by gm. This is how we do it. And quite simple, but it could be a repeating question if this question can occur in your examination so be very careful about it you cannot ignore it determine the height of the satellite above the earth's surface again ib has asked this question many times and uh, a lot of uh, calculation is involved in this but anyways <clears throat> so what is the height here so the data is now given the value of g is known to me See, in paper two, one thing is sure that all the questions are connected with each other. IB never breaks that principle that we have to say. So if in the first question they're talking about the Kepler's third law and they have already given you this formula, the formula is in front of you and the data is also given. It, be, it serves you as a big hint that we have to plug in this value in this and the very next question will be related with this. We are sure about it. So from this equation that we just created, and that is, let's say, t square is equal to 4 pi square divided by gm r cube. We are going to find the value of r by plugging all the values there. So I'm not plugging these values here now because it would be unnecessarily taking a lot of time for me to calculate those values. So the values are given here. Let me see. t square. into r cube 4 pi square is just a constant capital g is a gravitational constant so i think that will be given in the data booklet and you must remember it the capital m value is given capital t value is given and by this we will be finding the value of r now this r value is the distance of the center of the satellite from the center of the earth but we want to find the height of the satellite the height of the satellite not this so this capital r has to be subtracted from this 
small r. So small r is equal to capital R plus h. So h will be found by r minus capital R. So r value, small r value, you will find from the calculation. Capital R value is again given in the given data. Plug in here and you can find the value of h. So this is how we do it. I am not substituting the values. You have to do it by yourself. Is there any other thing? Yes. See. The atmosphere exerts a small viscous drag force on the satellite. Now, this is different. Outline how the total energy, kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy change for the satellite during one orbit around the Earth. What a beautiful question. And everything is discussed in just one question. So this is the thing which is like highly confusing and like quite many number of students, they get confused with this thing. Now, what is happening, you see? This is the planet and this is the satellite which is moving here. So because of the viscous drag force, clearly the energy is lost to the surroundings. It means that the total energy is definitely going to reduce. Now in the satellite motion, there is something known as bound state. So if you don't know it, then it clearly means that you have not taken the membership on my YouTube channel. <laughs> so take those memberships you could have watched this video you could have known about the bound state but anyways let me tell you now so the total energy is given as negative gmm divided by 2r the potential energy formula is negative gmm by r and kinetic energy formula is positive GMM by 2R. So you need only these three formulas to answer each and everything about these kind of questions. But the question is, you don't know the bound state. The bound state is majorly not given in your books even, but I have seen many questions, many paper two questions in which IB solution is talking about the bound state. So it is not that you can't talk about it or you can't use these formulas. Yes, you can use these formulas directly. Okay. Now, once you have these formulas with you, uh, this is the small drag force here and please do confirm it with your teachers if you can use this formula directly just a thought came to me because ib is highly unpredictable i don't know what ib is doing but i have seen these formulas in ib mark schemes so that should not be a problem okay now um, the drag force is happening here so total energy is reducing now total energy is already negative so if it is reducing what do you mean by that it is becoming even more negative. It means that the magnitude of the total energy must be increasing. If magnitude is increasing, how can you increase? By reducing the value of the denominator. It means that R value has to reduce. It means clearly that the R value is going to be reducing now. So it is going to come clear, nearer to the earth because the total energy is being lost. So if the viscous drag keeps on happening, it will be moving in a spiral fashion. So that's not uh, that big rocket science, I would say. It is understandable, but what else is happening? So the total energy is going to reduce and it is going to become even more negative. What is happening to the potential energy? Again, there is a negative sign here. So the potential energy is, is reducing. There is no doubt about it. So whenever a body is moving towards the surface of the earth or towards the earth, the potential energy is anyways reducing. But my dear students here, there is a catch. The formula for the potential energy, which is MGH, is not to be used ever in the topic of D1. This formula is wrong. We never use this formula in the D1 topic. It is only good for the topic A1, A2 like topics. Okay. So I'm just taking an example. So whenever a body is moving towards the earth or towards a planet, the potential energy will also be reducing and it will also be becoming even more negative. So the radius is reducing. So what is happening to kinetic energy? Now radius is reducing. The denominator is becoming smaller, which means that the fraction is increasing its value. So kinetic energy is increasing. That's a very confusing part. So near the, the satellite is going nearer to the surface of the earth. Its speed keeps on increasing. Like let's say it is moving in this kind of a spiral manner. So at this point, the speed will be very high. Here the speed will be lower. Here the speed is higher. So kinetic energy is increasing as the total energy is lost. The total energy is decreasing. Potential energy is decreasing, but the kinetic energy is increasing. 
this is how the things will turn up and why are we so sure about it because of the bound state principles because of these formulas there okay dear students i think that should be the last part for this question so this is how we do this yes this is the last part okay dear students this is professor varun thanks for watching the video all the best bye